Bertie? Uh, I don't know what to do. I just don't know. I was in front of the class and I couldn't talk. I was too tired to talk. Not that they would have listened. They were too busy sniffing the whiteout they'd stolen from typing class. <laughs> I had to excuse them early. I mean, I just cannot get rid of this flu. And it keeps getting worse, not better. But it's been months now. <sighs> Maybe it's not the flu. Flu doesn't last that long. You ought to go back to Dr. Raymond. I did, Blanche. He said I'm fine. Get a second opinion. She did. She went to Dr. Schlesinger. Well, then, you are fine. Now, you want to hear my idea? <laughs> she is not fine, Blanche. Look at her. I didn't say she looks fine. I said she was fine. <laughs> she looks like hell. <laughs> Together. Dorothy, you've got to see another doctor. Raymond is not a specialist. Yeah, but what kind of specialist do I need? Well, just call up Dr. Raymond and ask him. He'll, he'll refer you. You have to, honey. You're getting sicker and sicker. Results and how to keep this gown closed. Well, don't worry about it. You won't be needing it. Dorothy, get dressed. You're fine. I beg your pardon? We've run every test known to man. They're all normal. You can get dressed, go home, Enjoy your life. Well, Dr. Stevens, I was always healthy, and then I, I came down with this flu. I can't get rid of it. I've been sick for five months now. I have a constant sore throat, swollen glands, fevers. My muscles ache and are weak. I am totally exhausted all the time. I know, I know. You told me. Well, maybe it bears repeating. <laughs> Maybe you still think I'm Lorraine Mislansky. Look, uh, Dorothy, can I ask you a personal question? Yes. You're divorced. Yes. How's your um, social life? Do you, uh, do you see men? <laughs> what in the world does seeing men have to do with anything? Oh, Dorothy, we know for a fact that if people are not happy and lonely, people aren't. Oh. But they get all kinds of symptoms, depression, fatigue, Symptoms very much like the ones you described. Look, uh, Dr. Stevens, I don't think you understand, so I'm going to tell you again. I am at a point now where I am so exhausted that sometimes I cannot speak. Literally, cannot speak. There are days when I can't get out of bed. I, raising my arms to wash my hair in the shower is too exhausting for me. I can't even do that. I have heart palpitations. I can't concentrate. I forget things. I. I get confused. Look, Dorothy, I don't believe you're sick, but you do. Now, you want to pursue this? You want to spend more money? That's fine with me. So, go to New York and see the man I studied with. He's the best neurologist there is. I don't know anyone better. If you have anything, anything at all, he'll find it. Two and a half hours? I thought you died. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Nothing. Who are you? I'm the doctor. <laughs> We'll see about that. Uh, look, uh, Mrs. Uh... Trillo, I'm Dorothy's mother, and I want to know what's wrong with her. And don't tell me nothing, because I know there's something wrong with her. Mothers know. Look, Ma, I'll talk to you about it later. Your daughter is fine, Mrs. Petrillo. 100%? 100%. Tip-top? Tip-top. Then, Mr. 100% tip-top, why the hell does she feel like hell? Oh. <laughs> look, Ma... Wait, I gotta hear this. It could be functional. Functional? Mental. Mental? Well, let me tell you something, Mr. 100% tip-top mental. My daughter may be no spring chicken, and her jaw might crack when she chews. And she may have noticeable trouble digesting raw vegetables. But one thing she's not is mental. Thanks, Mom. Rose gets to go. Blanche, whenever I don't feel well, Rose makes me feel okay. What is she, your best friend? <laughs> Rose knows I'm sick. Well, I know you're sick. God knows you tell me all the time. <laughs> what a waste. Rose Nyland in New York. <laughs> it's gonna be a great trip. So... What are you doing here? You've seen everybody, nobody found anything wrong with you. And between their workups and mine, there are no more tests to run. Yeah, but I know Look, how Mrs. I... Mrs. Borner, your main complaint is you're tired. I get tired, too. It's called getting old. Dr. Bud, that's not what this is. I am sick. I've had to give up my job because I was too tired to do it. How'd you get here? 
I uh, flew. No, to my office. A taxi. And from the taxi? But how did I get from the taxi to your office? Not a hard question. <laughs> I walked. Right, you walked. You're not sick, Dorothy. The people I see can't walk. They can't swallow. Some of them can't breathe. Look, don't take this the wrong way, but have you ever thought about seeing a psychiatrist? I have seen two. Here are their letters. They both say there is nothing psychologically wrong with me. They believe it is physical. What the hell do they know? Psychiatry is not a science. <laughs> then why did you suggest I see one? Because what you have is not scientific. What else was I going to do? Send you to New Mexico to a shaman? There's nothing wrong with you, Dorothy, except what happens to all of us. In case you haven't noticed, you're not 30. Take a cruise, Dorothy. Go to a hypnotist. Change your hair color. My wife became a blonde. She's a new woman. Gorilla. Oh. oh, Rose, that's not it. What is it, Dorothy? What happened? Oh. Uh, maybe I am crazy. I mean, nobody believes me. Everybody thinks I'm crazy. Maybe I am. Maybe I'm really crazy. Oh, Dorothy, you are not crazy. I mean, you are absolutely not crazy. I've seen the way you walk. I've seen how wiped out you get. You're not crazy, honey. You're sick. I think so, too. I really do. But nobody believes me. Doctors don't know everything, Dorothy. You're right. I mean, they think they do, but they don't. <laughs> You're right. How is she? Wiped out and depressed, even though she tries to hide it. Sophia, she's going to be OK. I know it. She will be, Sophia. Now, she's tough. You know, there are all sorts of things that people get that they can't diagnose. And then they disappear just as mysteriously as they can. I think the worst thing in the world is if your child dies before you do. Sophia, Dorothy is not going to die. I know that. She'll be fine. I know. Why do you do that, Rose? Why do you make up stories? <laughs> it wouldn't feel right to live anymore, you know? If a kid dies, it wouldn't feel fair to live. Sophia, Dorothy's not dying. How do you know, Rose? I know. Oh, now, honey, she's right. I know, too, and I'm a writer. <laughs> I see things more clearly than the average person. My perceptions are keener. Oh, my eyes are blanched. <laughs> Sophia, we have all seen our husbands die. We know what that is. Except for her, she was getting a manicure. <laughs> Pedicure. Well, I'm 80-something, and I've seen more death and dying than any of you. Over the past five months, we've seen a perfectly healthy, energetic woman waste away. She can't do anything anymore. So what difference does it make that they don't have a name for it yet? It's still something. There were lots of diseases they didn't have a name for. You think they had a name for the Black Plague when one guy had it? Thousands had to die before they knew what it was. Dorothy could be dying, and they just don't know it. Well, as far as doctors go, you've certainly seen the best. The best don't exist anymore. The best are dead. Well, I don't know about oh. that. <laughs> You're the exception, Harry. I didn't mean you. So do you think I'm crazy, too? Dorothy, I think you're very sane. Just because a doctor hasn't found something doesn't mean there isn't something there. Are you serious? Well, how come you know that and they don't? First of all, dear, I know you. You're a stable person. And if you say you're sick, you probably are sick. Now, I want you to see uh, Michael Chang. He's a virologist on staff here at the hospital. You know, there are all kinds of diseases we didn't know about before. Look at Lyme disease. Harry, am I going to die? I'm afraid so. <laughs> You really think so? Sooner or later, I guarantee it. <laughs> Unless, of course, the Japanese come up with something. <laughs> Here you go. Come on, here's his name and number. Uh, My God, what hand... Oh, Dorothy, you look terrific. Where are you going? Oh, to see that specialist that Harry recommended. Wipe off your makeup. What? You look too healthy. Maybe that's why they don't believe you. You don't look sick. <laughs> She should go, they believe her. 
You've seen some wonderful doctors, but I really can't agree with their findings. There are new diseases arising all the time, things that we don't necessarily have tests for. But that doesn't mean the diseases don't exist. See how terrific... Dr. Chang, please. Well, I think that you are sick. I think you have something called chronic fatigue syndrome. It's fairly recent. There are many theories about it, but most of us believe it's a virus. It just has not been identified yet. Yeah. Doctors just kept telling me I was depressed. Well, depression can make a person feel tired, but depression doesn't start suddenly, give you swollen glands, sore throat, and all the other symptoms. Now, there are certain blood tests which we'll do, and if those results are abnormal, that combined with the exclusion of the other diseases will compose a profile that actually thousands of people fit. So I really have something real. I would say you most certainly do. But we should have our answers in a couple of weeks. How long will it last? I mean, will it go away? Does it get worse? Do, does anyone die from it? Well, no one has died from it. We don't know how long it lasts. Some people seem to recover in months. Some still have it after 10 years. But that happens in other diseases as well. You take multiple sclerosis. Some people have 20-year remissions. Others wind up in wheelchairs. There are variations. But all I can say at this point uh, is try to adapt to it. Rest when you need to, eat well, eliminate stress if you can. Right now, there is no cure and no one thing that relieves symptoms in everyone. Right now, I'm afraid you'll just have to live with it. Oh, why didn't they tell me all those doctors I saw? I'm sure some of them weren't familiar with it. And the ones who have heard about it sometimes have trouble believing it exists since they're not able to see it under their microscopes just yet. Those colleagues of mine, unfortunately, tend to blame the victim. I can't tell you what a relief this is. I'm sure. Are there any other questions that I could answer for you? Not now, not that I can think of. Maybe later. Right now, I, I can't even think straight. Well, if there are no more questions, I'll order some blood work. Uh, I... This is my treat. It is a celebration. What are we celebrating? My daughter found out she has a debilitating disease. <laughs> And it has a name. I am thrilled. We all are. Well, of course. <laughs> Congratulations. Champagne it is. I can't tell you what a relief it is to just be sick, not sick and crazy, and to know what I have and that there are a lot of other people who have the same thing. I don't like the name. I think I ought to have a better name. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what Dr. Chang said. Chronic fatigue syndrome makes it sound like I'm just a tired person when it is so much more than that. It's Dr. Bird, the neurologist I saw in New York, the one who told me I was just getting old and to go see a psychiatrist. Dorothy, don't make a scene. Order without me. Dr. Bird? Yes. You probably don't remember me, but... Uh, you told me I wasn't sick. Do you remember? You told me I was just getting old. I'm sorry, I really don't remember. Maybe you're getting old. <laughs> That's a little joke. Well, I tell you, Dr. Bud, I really am sick. I have chronic fatigue syndrome. That is a real illness. You can check with the Center for Disease Control. Oh, well, I'm sorry about that. Well, I'm glad. At least I know I have something. I'm sure. Well, nice seeing you. Not so fast. <laughs> there are some things I have to say. There are a lot of things that I have to say. Words can't express what I have to say. What I went through, what you put me through. I can't do this in a restaurant. Good. But I will. <laughs> Lois, who is this person? Look, miss, sit. I sat for you long enough. <laughs> Dr. Bud, I came to you sick. Sick and scared. And you dismissed me. You didn't have the answer. And instead of saying, I'm sorry, I don't know what's wrong with you, you made me feel crazy, like, like I had made it all up. You dismissed me. You made me feel like a, a child, a, a fool, a neurotic who was wasting your precious time. Is that, is that your caring profession? Is that healing? No one deserves that kind of treatment, Dr. Bud. No one. 
I suspect had I been a man, I might have been taken a little bit more seriously and not told to go to a hairdresser. Look, I am not going to sit here anymore. Shut up, Lois. <laughs> I don't know where you doctors lose your humanity, but you lose it. You know, if all of you at the beginning of your careers could get very sick and very scared for a while, you'd probably learn more from that than anything else. You'd better start listening to your patients. They need to be heard. They need caring. They need compassion. They need attending to. You know, someday, Dr. Bud, you're going to be on the other side of the table. And as angry as I am, and as angry as I always will be, I still wish you a better doctor than you were to me.